No matter the weather, the time, or the terrain, we march. Words that are all too familiar to a soldier. You patrol when it is time, not when weather permits. Patrolling is an essential task for any person who has decided to take their security seriously. The mission, its duration, the terrain, the enemy, and the weather conditions all determine the things that we carry. Packing for patrols is an art, passed down from man to man and generation to generation. Although the equipment has changed, one principle has remained the same. You're going to carry that weight. Hey, what's going on guys? It's Adam from Spiritus Systems. And today we're gonna to talk about short duration patrol loadouts. And we're talking 24 to 48 hours specifically. And I wanna frame this in a particular way. We're talking about warmer weather, right? We're talking short duration and warmer weather and more of a generalized security patrol. We are not talking about movement to contact. We are not talking about a specialized mission. So when you're in the comments and you're asking why I don't have my puff top, I'm gonna to be mad at you because I just told you what we're doing today. What we're gonna to talk about are these packs that I have in front of me. I have three different packs that I've selected. That doesn't mean that they're the only packs that you can use, and it doesn't mean that you should go out and necessarily buy these packs. The pack that you have already might be just fine. These are just three packs that I have, and they all serve a different role. And so I thought it'd be a good idea to show you more of a spectrum of items that you could use instead of just showing you one pack that I would use, uh, and then you go buy it, and then the stock price of Tactical Tailor or whatever goes through the roof. So. The first one I'm going to talk about <clears throat> is this Kelty pack right here. Uh, it is one of my older packs. I think I've had it for about 15 years now. It was specifically designed to carry the Harris 117 Foxtrot, uh, which is a radio, if you don't know what that is. It's a SATCOM radio. It's quite heavy and big. Uh, this pack was designed specifically for that, which is awesome. And it was awesome when I used it for that. When I stopped carrying a radio and I started doing other things in the Army, uh, I still use the pack because it is that good of a pack. One thing to note on this pack, it is an assault pack size pack. I don't know the exact internal dimensions. There's somebody in the comments that's gonna be like, well, how many cubic? I don't know. I don't know what it is. Uh, it's an assault pack size. I would say it's around the three day assault pack size. Uh, and a couple of notes on this that I really like. I like that it has zippered canteen or Nalgene pockets on the sides. Uh, and it also has an internal stay. So what is a stay, internal stay? Well, it's a fancy way of saying that it has a frame that's inside. It's, I think this is aluminum and it is removable if you don't want it. But what I like about that is that it makes this pack wear like a rucksack instead of an assault pack. Most assault packs, they bend too much, they're too uh, malleable and I don't like it. I want something very stable that's gonna, that's gonna carry the load the same way every time, no matter what I put in it. I'm not gonna feel it poking through the back into my, into my back. Uh, so yeah, so that's the Kelty, it's called the Kelty Raven. Um, you can check them out. I think they still make it. It's a good pack, had it forever. Yeah, I don't know what else to say about it. It's pretty good. The next pack I'm gonna talk about is the Tactical Tailor Malice Pack. So this is a true rucksack. And if you've been following the channel or if you follow us on socials or have just been a Spiritus uh, fan for a while, you probably know that I really like this pack. Again, this one I've had for many years. I uh, ordered this from Tactical Tailor when I was poor, poor little private, had no money, spent it all on the Tactical Tailor web store, got every single option that you could get at the time and never looked back. Uh, so why this pack? Most people are gonna say it's too big. They're gonna be like, Adam, it's too big. I can't, I can't carry it, possibly carry that on a 48 hour patrol. That's a lie. Whoever says that is lying. You can carry this on a 48 hour patrol. You can carry it on an eight hour patrol. Uh, I've done it many times. It is, uh, is what I carry when I need to carry a lot of stuff, specialized equipment, or if I'm planning on recovering things on the battlefield, right? If we're doing some kind of mission where we need to take stuff back with us, 
this is the pack that I'm going to carry because I don't know what to expect. I don't necessarily know what those items might, uh, might weigh or what they might look like. So I'm gonna have something that is very, uh, very large in capacity. What I like about the Alice pack too is that it has a lot of organization on the outside. If you're familiar with the Alice pack, which this was designed after, if you're familiar with that pack, uh, you know that it has a couple of organizational pouches on the outside. Uh, this one has taken that to another level. The entire outside of the pack is pouches, right? You have pouches all along the outside. You have them on the bottom. You have them on the sides. Even the flap itself has pouches built into it. Uh, so you can put all of your equipment on the outside of this pack, your patrol equipment, and then you can cinch it down very tight and really not have anything in the center of it and go out on your patrol, recover items or whatever. And for those guys who have trouble imagining things, that specialized equipment might be the clue for a javelin, right? Think of a big bulky bastard that you have to put in here and carry it around on a mission because guess what? The tanks are on the battlefield again and you might need to carry that with you, even if it is just a short duration patrol, right? One guy's carrying the missile, one guy's carrying the clue, and you're just the happiest two people ever. So Tactical Tailor Malice Pack, highly recommended. It's a beast. Uh, it's gonna carry everything you need and more. And finally, the Hill People Gear Decker. So this pack is the kind of the most non-traditional pack that we have uh, on the table. And this pack is a little more specialized and I would use it for kind of specialized tasks. The first thing you'll note is that it has the Connor pocket attached to the outside and then it has this channel on the inside. These load lifter straps can be extended or retracted, tightened down. But really the, the win here is that we can carry non-standard loads, weird shaped items, th big bulky things that normally don't play well with any pack. We can put them in here and we can pull those adjuster straps tight around the item and then now you have a pack that's carrying a weird item comfortably or as comfortable as it can be. So think, water cans, an M250 caliber receiver that you have to carry up to a observation post or a defensive position or something, ammo cans, things like that. Things that are just weird to carry, they can fit into this and then you can tighten them down. Also, I like this pack for honestly wet weather operations, which you wouldn't at first glance be like, oh, that's a great wet weather pack. Uh, but what I like about it is say you're doing a lot of water crossings or you're in some kind of riverine situation, that's, maybe that's your infill. Uh, is that you can put all of your items inside of a big wet weather bag. You shove one of those in there with all your stuff in it, tighten this around it, and now you have a pack that wears really well, but also is completely waterproof in terms of all the stuff you care about is inside of that wet weather bag. Uh, so you can just carry it inside there and then you, you, know, you have a waterproof bag. One thing I'll note about the Hill People gear bag is that it has the most unique suspension system out of the three packs that I've showed you. Uh, this has a yoke system, uh, which is different than the Tactical Tailor or the Kelty. They both have straps that very traditionally just come out of the top of the pack and over your shoulders. Uh, this yoke system is really adjustable for your height, for your, you know, all the dimensions of your body. You can really fine tune this uh, and it kind of shows just how how much care they put into actually wearing the pack through the mountains. Uh, it also has a hip belt on it, which we're gonna touch on here a little bit too. So hip belts, when you're making your pack selection, I highly recommend that you get a pack that has a removable hip belt or a way that you can pin the hip belt behind the pack and not use it. Because when we're wearing body armor, hip belts, which are designed to help us carry a load, actually inhibit us from carrying a load very well. So if you think of the traditional sense of a pack, you put it on and you lean forward a little bit, you take the weight off your shoulders, you buckle the hip belt and then you lean back and now the weight is resting on the hip belt itself. And so when you're trudging along, your shoulders aren't taking a, a complete beating from the weight of the pack. Works great. When you're, when you're out climbing around without, a, you know, without body armor on, it's awesome. As soon as you put body armor on, if you can imagine this is you know, the human body and this is your pack, with plate, you know, you have plates on, it starts to do this when you put the hip belt on. So you're actually changing your center of gravity to behind you, which is, which is super unnatural. And it's gonna pull on your shoulders. Uh, I don't like to have anything kind of pulling on my shoulders. 
It's gonna put your arms to sleep and anything that's gonna make me tip backwards is probably not a, a great idea. So if you don't have body armor on, wear the hip belt. If you do have body armor on, you probably just wanna use the shoulder straps. Um, another note on sternum straps and hip belts, you have to decide the level of you know, retention you want on your pack. As a person on patrol, you have to decide like, do I wanna be pinned into this pack? Do I wanna have something across my chest and something across my waist that is gonna prevent me from ditching this bag at a moment's notice if I need to? Just something to consider uh, when it comes to pack. So there's my three options. We have that kind of smaller Kelty pack, uh, kind of, you know, really small, really light, really fast. We have the, the big capacity Malice pack, and then we have the Decker for that irregular uh, load carriage situation that you might need. All right, so now let's talk about what's actually in the pack. Again, I'm gonna reiterate, this is very specific to a short duration patrol uh, where I don't really have a specialized mission. I'm just out there patrolling around uh, either looking for, for trouble or just doing a screening operation to protect uh, what we already have. Uh, so I'm gonna start with my, uh, kind of my sleep setup, right? It's usually the bulkiest thing that you'll have. Uh, in the summer, it's great because we don't have to care as much. So when the temperatures are 70-ish degrees and above, especially if they're 70 degrees at night still, uh, you don't have to have anything really. You're not gonna die of exposure if anything, you're gonna die of dehydration. So in my summer load, I don't have a lot of stuff. I rely basically on two items. The first one is this uh, nano mosquito pyramid net from Sea to Summit, I think. Yep, Sea to Summit. There you go, you can go buy it now. We'll link it in the description. So yeah, that's, uh, that's my bug net. And the reason why I carry this is obviously insects suck and they will 100% make you sick. This model specifically uh, I carry because it is almost too small to really use, but I don't really hang it up and use it as a traditional mosquito net, say over a, over a cot or something like that. It's small, I can really pitch this out if I need to and get inside of it if uh, the situation dictated that, but generally on a patrol or something like that, I'm gonna pull this out if we are bedding down and I'm going to just, you know, put it over my helmet and lean against my rucksack and then just let it lay out over my body, just kind of cross my arms, stuff like that. Uh, and it's just gonna keep some of the, the bugs and critters off of me. But again, it packs down so small, that's why it finds its way into my pack. The other piece is some kind of poncho, right? This one uh, is a, very beautiful Marine Corps woodland pattern, uh, very lightweight cloth that we don't make for you, but we make it for us, but maybe we'll make it for you one day. It's been in testing for about a year now, but super lightweight, does not have a hood or a hole for your head, just like the Marine Corps poncho does not, which actually makes it not really a poncho, it's just a tarp. So I carry a lightweight tarp that can be pitched out as some kind of shelter, but really I carry that, again, just to lay over my stuff, uh, to wrap around my body if I need to, um, to conceal things. So a mortar tube or uh, a 240 Bravo or something like that. So definitely those are my two items for, uh, for my kind of sheltering or whatever in hot weather. The next thing I'm gonna talk about is layers. So we just got done talking about how hot it is outside. Uh, but there's something that I never compromise on based on experience, is that I never go outside the wire without some kind of uh, synthetic fleece cap, uh, watch cap. So this is outdoor research. Uh, it has a nice fleece liner in it. The top uh, is nice and soft. Uh, this is something that I just will not, absolutely not leave the wire without one of these, and that is because weather shifts and I've been caught outside in the elements uh, too many times. And if you're in the military, you know that your four hour operation always turns into a four month operation and you've been living out of this tiny pack for that whole time. 
So I always carry uh, a fleece cap, non-negotiable for me. And then another item that I've collected through the years is uh, this wind shirt. So if you have uh, if you have the Equix system issued to you, uh, this is I think level five is the wind shirt. This one is by Wild Things, and it is uh, it is a hooded version. So I unzip this, the hood pops out. Uh, very thin. It's not water. It's not waterproof, but it is water resistant, and I do treat it uh, quite often so that it stays uh, resistant. But it's just a lightweight garment. Again, let me pack it down. This thing can get really, really small, but it's amazing how much comfort you can gain out of this garment. Uh, so I carry this in there because, again, if if the weather does shift. I want to be able to put something on uh, to kind of get through the night and, uh, and keep warm on that. Plus, it's thin enough to where I could use it as a second uh, layer um, if I want to swap out my other top, right, my actual uniform top or whatever I'm wearing, I could swap into that and use that as well. So the wind shirt, definitely uh, something I like. Those are the only two uh, kind of warmth layers, I would say, that I would carry in this kind of environment. Uh, the next thing I wanna talk about, things that I wear, socks. So everybody has different feet, and I hate all of them, but your feet are gonna sweat, and so carry extra socks. How many pairs you need to carry, that's up to how gross your feet are. So I carry usually two for uh, one per day, and I rotate my socks out quite often. Um, I'll take my socks that I've taken off and I will put those onto my pack. I will kind of strap them to my pack so that they dry in the sun, I'll let UV light hit them, I'll invert them. But I usually carry two. Uh, when selecting socks, I feel like you should already know this is just an adult, but you should do some kind of wool blend. Uh, these are darn tough, which I've found to be kind of the superior brand on the market right now. Um, a lot of people wear smart wool and stuff like that, but I think you just can't beat the the uh, darn tough sock for durability. And they also have a pretty pretty cool warranty where they'll replace your socks for you if you get a hole in them. Again, some of these socks I've had for like six years and they're still going good. So socks, extra socks are in my pack for sure. Uh, let's talk about water next. Water in hot weather is important and I carry water in a couple of different ways. But in my pack, uh, I will always have two canteens or Nalgene's, whatever, 32 ounces, right, uh, a piece. I will have two of these. Um, this is your standard USGI canteen. This is the issued one. It's opaque so that it doesn't grow algae in it. Um, it is a screw top and it's very simple to use. You drink out of it like every other thing that you drink out of. The reason why I'm showing you this is because uh, they catch a lot of flack. People are like, oh, I'm not, I don't know, there's something not cool about using a canteen, I guess. But these canteens are flat and they fit well against your body. They slide well into pouches. Uh, they're really good, actually. Proof that you don't have to spend a ton of money. You can get these at uh, any surplus store for probably a couple bucks, really. They're gross, probably on the inside, but nothing that a little bit of bleach won't cure. This one is a Nalgene brand canteen. Uh, something to note on this one, it has uh, an NBC cap on it. So it's important to me to have at least one of my water sources that has an NBC cap on it. Something that's overlooked, even in the army, there you'd have like two canteens and not have one. Uh, you can't drink if you don't have one and you're in an environment where you have to wear your uh, gas mask. So training with it, learning how to use it, learning actually cycling water through your gas mask is important. Drink from it, learn how it works, but having at least one that has has it, you can actually uh, purchase these on Amazon. So uh, we'll leave the NSN in the description as well so that you can look that up if you want it. So the thing that I kind of loathe, everybody's heard me talk about bladders. I'm not a big fan of bladders because bladders explode. Uh, if you put too much force on them, uh, they, they can burst. Uh, this is a source. That's the brand source. 
uh, bladder, and it's the only one I've found, I've had this one for quite a while, it's the only one I've found that, that does not burst. The hose doesn't fail, it doesn't get weird, um, it works actually pretty well, it has a fold top design on it, it's easy to fill, it's really easy to clean, uh, which I like about it. I do carry this one in my pack for short duration stuff, especially if I'm doing some kind of security uh, patrol or if I'm doing an assault. Something where I'm gonna be on the objective for a short amount of time and I don't wanna be fiddling around with a bottle or something like that. I wanna be able to pull security and drink water at the same time. That's where the bladder comes in. It also gives me quite a bit of capacity in my bag. Uh, so I can also fill bottles off it, stuff like that. So this is just in my pack, right? So I have the 100 ounce and then I have two of the 32 ounce bottles. Now, if I needed to plus up even more water, there's a ton of ways to do that. I can carry obviously more bottles or you can just carry bottled water or you can have another bladder or you can use uh, one of the many bladders available on the market. I just caution you not to use something you haven't proven uh, yourself in training because it will fail on you at the worst time. Ask me how I know and you'll have no water. So uh, I'm looking at you, Army issued Skillcraft Camelback circa 2006. I'm on a mountain with no water. Really appreciated that. So that's, uh, that's my water, like how I carry water. I carry a filtration kit with me. This, is, this piece of kit is really dependent on the operational environment. If it's a mill operation and we're supported, I may not carry this because I may not need it. But if it's uh, something where I feel like I'm gonna get unsupported, you kind of get that feeling when you're on military operations, like you're like, ah, nobody really cares about us. Like we're kind of gonna be out there by ourselves. Uh, then I will carry some sort of filtration system in my pack. And mine is pretty, it's, a, it's different parts, but it's pretty simple. I have tubing that goes to my gravity bag. I have a, a back flush uh, syringe with tape wrapped around it because these will always break and so you can fix them. Um, the bag itself, gravity fed, big old bag. This one is a 10 liter from uh, Mountain Safety Research. So you can just take a ton of water in this, dirty water, run it through your tubing. And then I prefer these Sawyer Mini filters. Uh, I feel like they're the right price the right filtration flow rate, and they seem to perform the best out of all of the ones that we've tested, which are quite a few. Uh, the Another one that really works well is the Platypus brand uh, filters, which may be made by Catadine or something like that. But uh, anyways, the ones that I think work the, the least are the MSR ones. So the Sawyers work well. I carry two because I wanna have a backup. Again, this water source is just for me. So anyone on patrol is gonna have to be able to fill a bag because the conversion rate, we're losing water, right, as we filter. In order for me to sustain myself, I'm gonna need that for just me. So everyone would have to carry this. And then I also have uh, a bag of AquaTabs, right? So AquaTabs is my preferred chemical purification method. So I would pre-filter the water, then I would run it through the, the filter set, and then I would drop some uh, chemical purification in there, just to be sure. I'm not playing around with dirty water while I'm out on patrol. So that's how I figure water out, right? The bottles, the bladder, and then the filtration system with a chemical purification backup on there. Uh, let's talk about food. So this is a MRE. Uh, I try not to eat these unless I absolutely have to. Um, I have one MRE in here that has been stripped down. So I've taken out anything I don't want and I have uh, gotten rid of any, any of the packaging or anything that I don't need. Uh, I would usually do that before the patrol. So I would just you know take my MREs, whatever I want. I would look at how many days I'm gonna be out and how much exertion I'm going to, to have to put myself through. Um, and then I would decide how much food I need. Now food is something that is, again, it's kind of particular to the person, right? Some people burn calories a lot faster or at a lot higher rate, I should say. And they might need more. They might just feel like they need more food and that's fine. Uh, for me, it is one of these per day 
if I'm on a short duration patrol. If I know I'm only gonna be out for 24 to 48 hours, I'm gonna bring one of these per day, and then I'm gonna supplement the actual main MRE with things like cliff bars or you know candy, things like that, like high energy food that I can consume uh, from a bag very quick and there's no trash and there's no cooking process at all. What you're not gonna see in my uh, short duration patrol pack, you're not going to see stoves, you're not gonna see things that need hot water or water really at all. You're, everything's gonna be something that I can consume kind of immediately if I need to. So that's my food situation. Um, oh yeah, that's not all everything. The spork. Uh, inside the bag, I have the plastic MRE spoon, uh, which works if you have MREs. If you don't have MREs, uh, getting some kind of, it doesn't have to be titanium like this one. It can be just a plastic one, which technically is lighter anyways, and it's plastic, so it's gonna last forever but have some way to eat your food so you're not using your hands. If it is some kind of meal, right? Obviously you're not eating your Cliff Bar with the titanium spork. I mean, I guess you can if you want, but it's kind of weird. Uh, weapons maintenance, something that I carry. Uh, I'm gonna open it up here. I carry a big bottle of lubricant. Uh, weapons maintenance to me is kind of a non-negotiable People, I think it's lacking, even in the military, I'd see guys and they just wouldn't carry any weapons maintenance stuff. It's kind of dumb. Uh, so uh, hops or hoppies, number nine, solvent, and that little guy right there. This is just a little Nalgene, uh, I don't know, what would you call this, a vial maybe? Uh, so that's a little Nalgene thing there. I carry a brush, soft bristle brush that I just cut the handle off to make it fit in the bag a little better. Boar snake, I know, every, Every dork in the comments is gonna be like, oh my God, you run a boar snake through your boar? Yeah, I don't care. I do it. Uh, a barber's brush, right? Mass, uh, getting dust, things like that off your, your rifle. This is a cleaning tool for a 240. I carry stuff, I carry cleaning equipment too that like, you know, this, this brush, maybe not as much on my AR, but if there are crew served weapons in the team, I'm going to be helping clean that weapon, so. Uh, and I carry a couple of cotton swabs and then I carry a cut off piece of brown t-shirt uh, so that I can wipe down my weapon, lubricate it, things like that. Put uh, parts on, you know, something that, something that I think gets missed is that like, you know, hey, you're out in the field, you need a surface. If you have to tear down a gun or something and clean it, you want a nice surface to put small parts on. So I'll carry the shirt and then, you know, you can throw those parts on there. Hopefully your crew served weapons guys have their own cleaning kit as well. And then, you know, a couple guys get together with a couple cleaning kits. It makes it pretty fast to get things done. Uh, personal hygiene. So for a 24 hour, 48 hour situation, short term, uh, this whole, the whole point of this is to show you that there's really not a lot here, right? I see guys and they show up for patrol and they have like everything on and they have all this stuff. Uh, you really don't need a lot, right? Uh, I don't carry on a 24 or 48, I don't carry a toothbrush. I don't carry toothpaste. I don't carry things that are going to compromise me from scent. I try not to have anything like that in my pack. Uh, I can survive 48 hours without brushing my teeth. Um, I don't wanna die in the field. So really uh, brushing your teeth, spitting, toothpaste everywhere. That's all sign that as somebody who tracks, we're going to immediately pick up on all that stuff. Plus I can smell your minty fresh Colgate from like a mile away. So I don't carry anything like that. But what I do carry are uh, things that I, I consider to be, again, non-negotiable. Some kind of repellent, bug repellent. I prefer uh, bug repellent that is not aerosoled because aerosol cans make a lot of noise. They don't get a lot of, of uh, you don't get a lot of actual repellent in that aerosol when you compare it to something that just has a spray nozzle. So this guy, you know, is just like liquid and you just spray it. See that? Oh, nice. Just breathe it in. Uh, but you can spray it on your hands first and then rub it onto your neck, uh, onto your face. There's something in bug repellent that melts plastic. Uh, so that's why I prefer this too, is if you aerosol on your helmet and things like that, all those plastic pieces, your strobes, uh, your night vision housings, this will start to melt it. It's kind of cool that we put this on our skin. 
probably shouldn't do that. But anyways, I put a little bit of tape around it uh, as well. I just like to have some repair tape. So it's just a good place to put it is around the, the bug repellent. Now this bug repellent may live in my little uh, ditty bag or I might put it in my kit if the bugs are uh, pretty egregious, then I would use that. I also carry a sun bum face stick, right? Again, we're talking hot weather. Uh, you are susceptible to sunburn um, like I am, then you just, I just rub this on my face so that I don't, uh, I don't get too sunburnt. This guy right here is is just sunscreen. Comes in a little bag. Again, sunscreen to put on if uh, if you're just out in hot weather the whole whole day. You're gonna want to have that. So another thing I carry is this uh, Caner Provisions. Again, in one of my videos, uh, it's their little water kit, right? The personal water decon kit. But I have amended it with my own items. Uh, so it has everything that the kit has normally but I've also just thrown in like a little more of like Advil, um, like a Dayquil pack, things like that. Just small repair stuff, right? Uh, Band-Aids, more Band-Aids, stuff like that. Motrin, different types of anti-inflammatories because of minor injury, right? You jam a finger or you roll your ankle and now you are in a situation that you're just in pain basically the whole time you're rock marching or whatever. Uh, it's a good way to uh, just, you know, kind of kill some of those over the next 48 hours and, and feel a little bit better on your patrol. Um, 550 cord, I always carry a little bundle of it, usually 25 to 50 feet of uh, 550 cord that has not been gutted. Uh, tons of uses for this, so I'm not going to get into everything, but you might have to repair stuff, string things up, whatever. That's what that's for. Wet weather bag. Uh, th this one's, I really actually have used this guy for a long time and I like it. See the Summit again, it's one of their lighter weight. Uh, I think it's called, I don't know what it's called exactly the, the type, but it's the, oh, it's the View 8 liter is what it is, View 8 liter. And I like this one because of the View, because you can look inside of it, right? So when you are looking to find that one pair of socks in here, you can just look and see where it is. Uh, it's bright green, which kind of sucks, but this doesn't come out of my pack unless, it actually probably doesn't come out of my pack. I just leave it in there and dig around in it. But uh, I like to keep all of my, pretty much everything in my pack is in this. So you can imagine how much, how much stuff is in my pack. It's not very much on this summer patrol pack. It all fits inside of here. Specialized equipment. This is gonna vary based on what you have, right? And uh, most of my, specialized equipment is gonna be in a different video uh, that is on my already on my kit, right? So we're not talking about what I'm wearing on my person and we're not talking about what I'm wearing uh, in my chest rig or on my helmet. We're just talking about my pack. Uh, that's where I keep my thermal uh, and that's where I'd always keep my thermal in the military too is just in my pack. It's just kind of resting in there, hanging out, being protected from getting broken. Also, it's just a bigger item. It doesn't fit well onto kit. I do have it set up with a neck lanyard. So at night I will, uh, you know, just hang this around my neck and it can just hang there as I walk around. But for the daytime, I just keep it inside my, uh, my pack. I do carry a spare battery. Uh, your batteries for your radio are gonna be dependent on your SOPs for communication. Uh, at the height of the GWAT, we were so risk adverse that we basically had to have our radios on all the time. Your radio was just on the whole the whole duration of the operation. So that forced us as, especially as RTOs, to carry a ton of batteries, right? So uh, I recommend, and if you're in the military, you should recommend this to your command, or if you're the commander, you should, you should start implementing this. Uh, save everybody a lot of pain, be more lethal and lightweight, and have comms windows uh, where you check in with each other on an operation uh, so that you don't have to carry as many batteries. But So I have one in here for a two day patrol, but if our radios are on the whole time, we're gonna have to carry more. It, you expend one of these batteries on the radio that I'm using probably every eight hours. Uh, so you can do the math, right? We're gonna need quite a few more batteries uh, in that case, but I do carry those in my pack. And then the last thing, which is I think the most important thing, it's also one of the most forgotten things. 
uh, some sort of baby wipe or toilet paper or something in case you have to defecate. You are going to want to have something to clean up with. Uh, there's a couple of schools of thought on it. There are people who use uh, toilet paper. They prefer toilet paper. There's people who prefer wet wipes. And there's also people uh, who are like a lot more savage than me and they just use like a small water bottle and soap. And so any of those methods work uh, to clean yourself up. But just remember if you're patrolling and you are trying to remain undetected, whatever waste you create has to be carried around with you to leave the space. And that's why when I uh, field strip my MREs, I don't get rid of the bag. A lot of guys will get rid of the outer bag and they'll just carry the in, you know internal stuff. I actually keep uh, this outer bag as well. And so basically you would defecate into this bag. You would throw all the toilet paper and things like that into it. And then you would seal it using that uh, Gorilla Tape that I had on my, um, on my bottle of repellent. So you would seal this whole thing up and then you'd carry this around with you and that sucks, but it's just the way it is. They make bags, they're called wag bags. I sometimes would use those. That's for like the climbing community will know what I'm talking about. It's much smaller. Uh, it's, it's a Mylar bag. It has an internal bag. It has like some, you know, it has some kind of like coagulant material in there and, uh, and some odor killers and things like that. In my experience, it still just smells like shit. So you are gonna carry it no matter what, but you have to pack it out some way. So these, the last thing you want is to have baby wipes in a trail behind your element as you're walking around. So it's kind of the last piece of it, but yeah, that's it. That's what I carry in a summer loadout bag. Uh, you notice that there's, there's no ammo in here. There's no magazines in here. I, I prefer to keep everything that I need to fight without my pack on my body. So it's either in my uniform or it's on my chest rig and I keep all that stuff close at hand. So all my ammo is, is on my rig. Um, I very rarely carry ammunition in my bag, potentially if it's a crew served weapon and I'm carrying extras or something like that. But generally I keep all that stuff on there. I even have water on my kit, you know, that is separate from this water. So anything I need to survive is gonna be with me on my kit so that I can, uh, I can fight and then sustain myself in, at least enough to escape and evade from the situation. So thanks for watching guys and we'll see you next time.